All right, so we are on question 16 now. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So the following values of the rate constant were obtained for the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide at various temperatures. Plot the logarithm graph, obtain the energy of activation. So the energy of activation, in other terms, they are asking us to determine what we are calling the, the activation energy. Okay. So the activation energy we presented as Ea in other terms. So that's what they want us to find. Now we know this is part of the Arrhenius equation whenever we're dealing with temperature and the constant K. So the basic form of equation, we know that K is equal to E to the power negative Ea, denoting the activation energy over RT. Okay, we also know that if we introduce a natural log, the equation becomes the natural log of k is equal to negative e a over r t. So I can pull out 1 over t. Now from the way things are looking there, you can actually see that this part, if we're going to put this, put it in the form of a linear equation, this becomes your y, this becomes your gradient, your slope in other terms, and that is your x. So even when plotting, on the y-axis, what we're going to have is we're going to have the natural log of k. So natural log of k. And then on the x-axis, that's where we're going to put our reciprocal of the temperature. Now, each time we're dealing with this kind of um, the linear equation, we need to ensure that the temperature is in Kelvin. Okay, and then we introduce a natural log of natural log to the values of k. So let's try to extend our table and see what we can do. So let me just okay, and then we can extend our table now. So the values we need is we need we need the natural log of k, and then we also need the temperatures, right? The temperatures, we know we need one over the temperature. Well, let me actually put it just on the other side so that it will be easier. So, one over temperature. And then we can remove it on the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to ensure that the temperature is supposed to first of all be converted to Kelvin. And how do you do that? We know it's supposed to add 273, right? 273. So each value here is supposed to be added with 273. So each, each temperature value added 273 get the new temperature value okay so for the first one for example if you add the 320 we have and then you had the 273 so this value there 320 plus 273 so I'm getting 593 so for you now to get the new value of a temperature, we need the reciprocal of it. So, how do we calculate that? So, it's going to be 1 over the new temperature value 593, which is in Kelvin. So, 1 divided by that, you get something like 0 0.001686. Okay. So we'll do the same for the other parts as well. The next one is a 330. So 330, you need to add the 273. It will be 603. Now 1 divided by 603. There we are having something like 0 0.00. .00 one six five eight one six five eight 
and then for the next one 340 340 plus 273 613 1 divided by 613 the value I'm getting is 0 0.0016 and then for the last one 273 plus 350 623 1 divided by 623 so the value there is going to be 0 0.0016 so 0 0.05 So we've found the values for 1 over temperature. Now for the natural log of K, all the values we have here, we introduce a natural log. So for the first one, natural log of 0 0.527 is negative. So negative 0 0.640. Zero. And then natural log of 0 0.776 negative 0 0.253. Then natural log of 1. Point, natural log of 1.121. That's 0. Point one one four and then the last one natural log of one point six zero seven zero point four seven four okay so at this point now we've got all the values that we need for us to plot the graph and pay particular attention on what we're going to do I already told you this is a basic form of equation. So well we now know that this part is representing the the y and then the other part is representing the x values. Okay? So that's going to help us. So with that in underst with that understanding, um let's put the let's show on our plane. So this part is our y natural log of k then our x is 1 over the temperature now let's try to assess the values we have first of all of uh, our y when you check our y you can see that we actually have negative values there okay so negative 6 negative 0 0.6 negative 0 0.2 0 0.1 0 0.477 Four seven four. So those values can be easier if we can move in terms of zero point two, zero point something, zero point what can be easier, right? So what if we can say um, I can't change my values here, so I'll just cancel them. So we can have zero point two, zero point four, zero point six, and then on the bottom negative 0 0.2 then you can have negative 0 0.4 yeah, as the next one so what we have let me just move this a bit up So the negative 0 0.2, it means the next value will be negative 0 0.4. Okay. So negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.6. Don't mind me, I'm having issues with the, the tablet, so I can't actually indicate that. And then for the x values now, if we try to assess the x values, these ones here, you see that the first four values are like the same, 0 0.001. One, in fact, up to six. 
so they are the same 0 0.001 and 6 where the values are differing is after 6 so for the first one we have 8 the next one we have 5 the next one we have 3 the next one we have 0 so we'll use those values to assess ourselves so we use 0 3 5 and 8 so how easily can we deal with those ones so I think for us one for those ones we can just count right so I can extend my x-axis so that we go up to 10 and then this point it's like we are going to assume everything else is the same so we disregard all the numbers before 6 and including 6 we only consider ones after okay and then we can prot so let's prot so if we check the first one for our y value we have negative 0 0.6 right so if we have negative 0 0.6 and then the x we have 8 remember we are saying we are disregarding the other numbers so 8 we are at 8 comma comma at something like negative 0 0.6 which is somewhere here right because if that is negative 0 0.2 the next one is negative 0 0.4 so the other one is going to be negative 0 0.6 comma 8 so it should be somewhere here somewhere here okay and then the next one is we have a 5 there so 5 somewhere there and then 5 comma negative 0 0.2 so somewhere here and then 0 0.1 that's a positive comma that's a 3 so somewhere here and then 0 0.47 which is closer to 5 comma is a 0 there zero so zero is representing the, the y values right no the x values so approximately that's like that's like one now for the y values we have 0 0.4 so somewhere 0 0.47 slightly above 4 closer to 5 which is likely to be 5 is likely to be in between 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 so closer to that so let's say somewhere there yeah but because of the 1 if we round off 5 it becomes a 1 so it would be 1 somewhere there okay so we've put it over 4 values and then you can draw a line that's going to show everything so we draw a perfect fit line it's a line that can join all these four points yeah not too good mm, okay that's better okay so we've drawn a line so now your, your your work is just to get any values that are part of this line and then determine the change in y and then the change in x okay so for to make my locations easier i'll just take the two any two that are part of the, the points okay because my graph is not so clear here so if i get two green points Let's say I get this one, and then, and then this one. Now let me just get the. Um, let me get the the two endpoints. So, let's try to find the difference. So for the y, just grab the calculator and see. 
grab your eye. So for the y value, the y value is this one. So subtract the, the first one there. Find the difference, and then do the same this other side. That x value, and then subtract from this other value, and divide the difference. Change in y over the change in x. That's the way we do it. 0 0.474 minus negative 0 0.640 1.114 divided by the change in x 0 0.001605 minus 0 0.001686 something like negative 0 0.0000 and then 0 0.0481 Okay, so now divide the two, one point one one four, by that. So I'm getting negative, negative zero point, not, not negative actually, negative thirteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-five, seven hundred and fifty-three. 0.08 so that's our slope now we said our slope in this case our m is going to be equal to negative we said negative ea over our rt okay or our slope in fact without the t just the negative ea over r that's our slope so we already have our m, right? We can plug in. So our m, we found something like this. Is a value we found, value 15,000. So it can represent the m. So we have a new equation. Now we know that our r is also 8.3145. So cross and multiply there to find the value of ea. So our negative 15,000 multiplied by 8.3145, getting something like negative, in fact it become positive now, 114,350, okay, so that's in terms of jaws. If you want to take it to kilo jaws, of course this is per more. If you want to take it to kilojoules divided by a thousand, it will become negative, just positive 114 kilojoules. But for the sake of this video, I think this is what we can end in terms of our calculations. I apologize for the delay due to the issues with the gadgets here. So understand the slope represents all right. The slope is equal to negative here over R.